Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at Engadget, Sony is offering up a Pro 4K camcorder for $6,500. It's the PXWZ100. It comes with 10-bit video encoding. Pretty awesome. And 600 megabits per second video. So other than a small-ish, uh, one and two-third, 2.3-inch uh, sensor. Sony's new PXWZ100 4K camcorder should push all the right buttons for pro shooters. It shares a sensor and body with the newly launched FDR AX1 prosumer model. Everything is upmarket from there. You'll get full 422 10-bit uh, 4K video at up to uh, 500, 600 megabits per second at uh, 50 or 60 frames per second progressive using the new XAVC format and high-speed XQD memory cards. So pretty awesome. Um, I'd like to uh, see this. I, you know, a larger sensor would be nice because that means it's more sensitive and you get a cleaner picture. But still, nonetheless... Pretty awesome camera. Definitely check it out, especially if you're in the market for a new camcorder. From Geeky Gadgets over at geek, geeky-gadgets.com, Elon Musk shows off his Iron Man-style 3D modeling. It's a video posted on YouTube where he is showing off uh, this 3D modeling uh, that, I, I, for lack of a better way of me explaining it, just go watch the video. It's awesome. Definitely check it out. Uh, over at The Verge, Google is racing to encrypt data transfers in response to NSA surveillance. That is correct. Google is stepping up its efforts to encrypt information flowing between its own data centers as a response to the surveillance programs waged by the NSA and other intelligence agencies around the world. Pretty interesting. Uh, it's an arms race, says Eric Gross, Google's vice president for security engineering. Uh, we see these government agencies as among the most skilled players in this game. The disclosure of the security effort, which has been going on for about a year, comes amid reports that the NSA can get around the most common encryption methods, which, if you ask me, is even more scary. Um, it has Google has sped up sped up its encryption efforts in June after the NSA's PRISM surveillance program was revealed. And while Google's encryption efforts won't make it impossible for the NSA and others to circumvent information uh, flowing between its data centers, the company explains that encryption will at least make massive government or hacker spying efforts more difficult to pull off. And that's really the point of security. Uh, you know, there is no such thing as security through obscurity. It really boils down to making it difficult enough that that's not the thing you want to attack. It's kind of like the house with the nice big giant picture window in the, in the front, uh, and a, you know, a security gate on the front door. And, and, you know, if you put the security gate on the front door, that's really not the way to get into the house. The best way to get into the house is to pick up the brick or the, the big rock or whatever that's out in the little rock garden in front of the house and throw it through the big giant picture window because that's the easier way to get in at that point um you know it's it's all about minimizing the attack vector and you can never fully get rid of your attack surface but it's it's about a min minimizing the attack surface or moving it to something that's manageable or easy or it's a known that it's like this is you know sure they can do this other stuff but the amount of effort that they'd have to do to do that would be far more than to just go this other route. So uh, should be pretty interesting. From makezine.com, there's a uh, story posted here, component of the month, relays. That's right. Each month, we're, uh, Make is exploring a different electronic component, delving into what it is, how it works, and how you use it in projects. 
So last month, uh, make covered transistors, and before that, they looked at capacitors, LEDs, and diodes, and so this month, they are looking at relays. So they're uh, uh, starting off with an introduction uh, to the component, and I thought it would be interesting to share with everybody here, since, uh, you know, I'm a kind of a DIY, uh, not kind of a DIY tinkerer, if you will. So uh, definitely give this a check out. The relays are very handy and very useful. From Electronista, Gadgets for Geeks, EFF wins a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the NSA. Hundreds of docs will be released. This is pretty awesome. Uh, they are forcing the agency to make public hundreds of pages of documents. The activist group uh, requested material relevant to the government's previously secret interpretation of Section 215 of the Patriot Act, which, which covers collection of tangible things related to investigations. So uh, should be pretty interesting uh, to see uh, what gets released. I'll be keeping an eye on that, and we'll uh, talk about it as it becomes uh, publicly available. From Make Design again, my Eagle project using Raspberry Pi to deliver education to Afghan schools. I thought this was an interesting story to share simply because uh, it's education related and it's Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi has a lot of really cool stuff. So uh, it's uh, my Eagle project. Um, it's basically this guy that's using a Raspberry Pi platform to build computers for students at a girls' school in Afghanistan. They're raising the money online at Indiegogo, and they'll be building a special preloaded Linux distribution with educational software. Trust in Education, a nonprofit aid group, will be setting up a computer lab with the Pi-based computer, so this is pretty neat. I would definitely be looking forward to see uh, what comes of this. Uh, from Hack a Day. A PC rig that belongs on the wall of an art museum. I thought this was just plain, downright awesome. This guy built this PC, and it is probably the one one of the most beautiful PCs. I've, I mean, this thing deserves to be mounted on a wall. It's that pretty. It's <laughs> I don't have any better way of describing it. Uh, when Overclock.net user uh, Show4 Pro decided to upgrade his old dusty rig, he eschewed the conventional PC form factor and, and instead built an incredibly sexy custom wall-mounted case. The six sticks of RAM, quad HDD slash SSDs, and dual Radeon HD 7970s are enough to make all but the most hardcore gamer blush. But that was the only the beginning there. He, uh, using a Dremel tool, he cut the frame from a piece of hard board and coated it with a mock carbon fiber vinyl sheet. And uh, that backdrop acts to, uh, to both hide all the cables and provide structural support to the components. Um, then he's got some custom light guides cut from the acrylic sheet. They're backlit with LEDs and serves as the border for each of the components. I, this it, it looks gorgeous. It's beautiful. You have to check this out. Definitely, uh, they've got pictures online. Definitely go take a look at it. And uh, if you like it, let them know. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. You can find those online over at quicksurf.com. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. Thanks for watching and listening, and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you.